Nice. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so us. much. Well, you want to talk about the show now? Let's talk about the show. Oh, okay. Let's have another sip and talk about the show, shall we? Yeah, we, we need to loosen up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we were so tight before. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rick. Yes. Season two of season Red two. Yes. What made you decide on Mexico City? I adore this city. Part of what Prebalo is to me is about experiencing new things and then sharing it with people that I care about. I love this food, I love this city, I love this culture, and I want people to come here and, and meet the people that I meet, eat the food that I eat, drink the mezcalas that I drink, and then, you know, go home and I'm gonna give you some recipes so that you can try it at home because it's a connection to Mexico City. It's a point in time. And when you're able to go home and, and recreate that, you're pulling yourself back into Mexico City. Not only are you going to share these dishes and take home equivalents, you're also going to create what seems like a practical travel, food travel guide yeah. to Mexico City. It's food that maybe the locals are eating. Maybe that's, it's a joint that's been there for 25 years, or maybe it's a, the place that just opened up and they're doing some crazy new things, but it's all delicious. Well, I'm so excited to be able to share this with you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for and coming. Thank you guys for watching Rebolo season two. In this season, we are going to spend the entire time in Mexico City. I am going to show you my favorite places to eat. And today, we're starting with some of the most beautiful and innovative tacos I have ever seen. Back in 2019, I met Pilar and Jorge, the owners of Tizne Taco Motora. They have some incredible tacos. And so when I was planning all the different places that I wanted to show you in this season, I checked out their Instagram feed and I saw a lot of new tacos on the menu. So that's why we're here today. I need to try those tacos. Hi. I'm good, how are you? <laughs> nice to meet you too. I am so excited about this. Okay, I love these tacos. I've pretty much eaten everything on this menu, but two things that I have not tried before are the gringas de barbacoa and the grilled chisadilla, which also comes with a sort of tomato soup kind of dipping vibe. I think it's kind of a play off of a grilled cheese. Anyway, we're about to find out and I'm gonna place my order. This is the one that I've never tried before that I'm super excited about. I have really fond memories of like my, my padrinos, my godparents and my, my parents on Sunday morning going to the Mercado in San Antonio and buying like pounds and pounds of barbacoa and my mom and my aunt making fresh flour tortillas and it was just so incredibly delicious. Mm. Wow. It's a lot different than what I expected. The barbacoa is just like so tender. It's falling apart. It's a little bit juicy. It's very smoky. Um, I wasn't expecting that part of it, but also the cheese is super, super creamy. It's Gouda, but it almost reads like a, a, like a mozzarella. This is really good. I think this may be the taco that I have to make. My friends and owners of Tizne, Pilar and Jorge, weren't in Mexico City when I was, so I gave them a call when I got home to learn more about their delicious barbacoa. One of the things that I loved on this visit was the barbacoa. So I wanted to ask you, what inspired your barbacoa and, and where did the idea to make the barbacoa come from? Well, we wanted to make like a very basic uh, barbacoa. We uh, <laughs> serve it 
Uh, we rub it with our own made rub uh, with the spices and chile and dry chiles. And we smoked it for about 12, 14 hours. Wow. Oh, okay. And then we put on the griddle and we put a lot of broth and it's like a, I don't know, glaze. Si, sí, si, sí, si. Sí. I'm always blown away by the the creativity and the, the passion and the love that you put into your tacos. They're always so beautiful. They always taste so good. No, thank you. Oh, thank you, appreciate. <laughs> I think what inspired me the most from the Gringa at Disney was the play of the cheese and the barbacoa and the tortilla. It was really rich. It was beefy, it was smoky. There were a lot of spices. I really wanted more of that flavor and that was really what inspired me to create barbacoa. When I think of barbacoa, I want a consomme. I want something that's really rich, delicious. This is obviously not a Tuesday night meal. This is something that you're gonna make with a lot of love for the people that you love the most. So let's get started. There are two do-aheads for this recipe. The first thing that we're gonna do is marinate the meat. The second thing we're gonna do is we're going to soak the garbanzos. Both of those are gonna go overnight. We're gonna ensure that there's a lot of flavor in the meat and that the garbanzos are gonna be completely cooked. To make the adobo, bring guajillo pasilla, ancho morita, three quarters of a cup of water to a boil in a medium saucepan over high heat. Cover, remove from heat, and let sit until the chiles are very tender, about 20 minutes. Transfer everything to the jar of a blender. Add onion, garlic, peppercorn, allspice, thyme, oregano, cumin, cloves, bay leaves, avocado leaves, canela, vinegar, oil, pulque, and salt. The secret ingredient, I think, in this barbacoa is the pulque. It's a fermented drink, and so it's got like a little kombucha-like edge to it, which I really, really like. In the marinating process, it really changes that flavor, and it's really beautiful. Transfer to a large bowl and toss beef and adobo until completely coated. So now this is going to marinate for at least 12 hours and up to 36. That'll give the meat time to soak up all those incredible flavors. Now it's time to prep the garbanzos. To make sure that the garbanzos are completely soft and tender, I'm going to soak them in one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. And then this is a teaspoon of salt. And now we're just gonna cover them with water. I'm gonna mix it up just to dissolve and let these sit overnight and they're gonna be totally delicious in the morning. After the meat is marinated, prep the veggies for the consomme. Now we are almost ready to assemble. We just need to roast the banana leaves. Unfold a banana leaf. It should be about two to three feet long. If you have gas burners, heat one gas burner on high. Hold the leaf at each end and very slowly move the leaf over the flame, leaving it in one place until you see a light discoloration coming through the top or until the entire leaf is very slightly charred. Repeat with the remaining banana leaves. Let's put it all together. So this is really my excuse to pull out my beautiful cazuelas de barro. You don't have to have one of these in order to make this dish. Uh, you can totally do it in a Dutch oven. What you need is something that's really, really big that has a tight fitting lid. All we're gonna do is throw everything in. So all of our chopped peppers, carrots, garlic, avocado leaf. We'll just tuck that in right there. I have these beautiful Cambrai onions, or you can use spring onions, or you can use scallions. My soaked garbanzos, you can see how nice and plump they are now. And remaining two teaspoons of salt. Cover with five cups of water. Ah, the high pour. Ah. Place roasted banana leaves over the top of the water and the vegetables, folding or cutting and trimming as necessary. You want about three layers of leaves to cover the consomme. Now, we're just going to dump our meat our beautiful marinated beef into the banana leaf. I'm just gonna cover the top of it. I want the meat to steam, and so this is gonna act as a little barrier. So now that's done, I'm taking my clay lid, 
which are honestly is just like a clay plate that fits over the top of this particular cazuela. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and bring it to a boil over the stove. Roll about two tablespoons of masa into a half inch thick rope. Press the masa into the gap between the lid and the pot to seal the barbacoa. Continue with masa until the pot is completely sealed. On my trip, I got to cook with Jesus at Expendio de Maiz. He repaired one of his cazuelas with a bit of masa, which I thought was so cool. This technique is also really similar to when we made birria in the first episode of Prevalo and used mud to seal the horno. It's going to make everything really delicious and seal in all that flavor. I can hear the sound of the boiling water inside the cazuela. That means it's done. So I've set the oven for 250 degrees. I lowered the racks so the cazuela fits in the very center. And now it's time to put it in. So now this is going to slowly cook for the next nine to 12 hours until the meat is just falling off the bone and the garbanzos are creamy on the inside. I think I'm gonna go take a nap. The barbacoa is almost finished, so I'm gonna get the cheese and the salsa ready. At Disney, they had a full selection of salsas to choose from. So I decided I wanna make a punchy green salsa with tomatillos. Now that the salsa is done, I'm gonna work on the cheese. So for the gringa, you obviously need queso. Uh, I'm using queso Oaxaca. At Disney, they used Gouda, which I really, really like a lot, but I also just really love quesillo or queso Oaxaca. It's so good, it's so creamy. It's got a little pop of salt in it. The fun way to shred it up is just to pull it apart. Now that the cheese is shredded, it's time to check on the barbacoa. All right, it's been a little over nine hours and I think it's time to reveal the barbacoa. All right, so I'm going to take this off. I'm just gonna say carefully, but whatever, it's kind of already coming off for me. Voila. Oh my God. Oh. And here's how to make the gringas. Toast one side of the tortilla in a medium skillet, preferably cast iron, over medium high heat until golden brown in spots, about two minutes. Flip and top with about two tablespoons of queso, one quarter cup of barbacoa, fold the tortilla in half and continue to cook, flipping once until both sides are deep golden brown and the cheese is melted, about three minutes. This is the consume. And here is our gringa de barbacoa with a rich consume. Serve with tortillas, onions, cilantro, lime wedges, and salsa to make tacos. This is gonna be like undressed, no salsa, no, no nothing. I just wanna see what it tastes like. Mm. Ah, oh, it's so good, oh my God. And this flour tortilla is just like sopping up all of those extra juices. That was a really good bite. I'm gonna taste it now with some salsa to help cut through all of that richness. All right. Mm. It's just perfect. I don't, it's like, I don't know what else to say. Okay, the consomme. <laughs> This is incredible. I loved the gringa from Tizne. I loved the barbacoa. It gave me the opportunity to create my own barbacoa. This is the first barbacoa that I've ever made. I am really excited to share this recipe both with you and now I get to share this amazing food with my crew that I absolutely adore and love. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy this recipe. Hey, Rick. Hi, Rick. <laughs>